the European Union is introducing a new registration system for travellers to the bloc. The European Travel Information and Authorization System, or ETIAS, will require incoming travellers to answer security questions and provide personal data. Passengers' names will be cross-checked against police databases and the results sent by email. ETIAS authorization will cost seven euros, which will be a one-off fee and will be valid for three years and for multiple entries. For anyone who's recently travelled to the US, it's basically the same as their ESTA system. It doesn't strike me as a huge deal. The fact that Brexiteers will have to pay seven euros to go abroad has got some of them really riled up. That anger was evident in this debate between Owen Jones and Carol Malone on The Jeremy Vine Show. Look, we've got Brexit. Brexit's now permanent. We're going to be having Brexit now probably forever. We've left the European Union. I think almost all of us have agreed that's got to be respected. That's got to be that's got to happen. But I think people have got to stop pretending it's a cost free exercise where all the things people who wanted to leave happen and there are no costs. So all the reasons say Carol voted for Brexit and there are lots of legitimate reasons why people did vote to leave the EU. I'm not a big fan of the EU. I voted for Remain on Balance. But the, this is what people said would happen. We're not a member of the European Union well, anymore. Why do they need to do it now? When they didn't do it before, yes, I know we were part of it. I knew we were part because of it. we remember the European but, Union. Yes, but why? Yes, but why do we have to? Question. Why, why is it necessary to impose a six pound charge? This is you know, Owen, and you're being very um, you're being very calm about leaving the EU. You you thought it was one of the most hideous things on the planet. No, I didn't. But this is just no, I didn't. That's is, not true. This, I even well, debated supporting just, leaving the EU. Actually, well, exactly. That's the point. This is spite and divisiveness oh, on the part of the EU. I mean, you know, and it's a very odd move considering that they're they're quite a lot of the countries within the EU are very dependent on UK traffic for holiday. They're very they're very dependent well, it, on but, tourism. But hang on. This is part of something called the ETIAS scheme which applies yeah. to all non-EU countries. So it's it's everyone who's not in the EU. So now the question is, is it right Owen, when Tory MP Peter Bone says this is anti-Britishness in the wake of Brexit? No, look, freedom of movement has ended. One of the main reasons people voted to leave the European Union was to end freedom of movement. Freedom of movement is now ending, and the quid pro quo of that is we're not members of the European Union, and we are now subject to visa charges. If you're not members, if it's the same with other countries. There's several other countries on the planet where in order to enter, you have to pay a visa charge. If we were still members of the European Union, there would be freedom of movement, and we wouldn't be subject I to these visa charges. think it's quite a big story, this, Carol, isn't it? Because it's going to increase costs for people going on you know, relatively cheap, sunny holidays. And I think, But I think it also reaffirms in a lot of people's minds that they were quite right to vote to leave this this <laughs> controlling organisation. It's not Which controlling. We're not members so, anymore. So <laughs> I thought that was actually a very good bit of television. My favourite line there, Dahlia, was I said, why are they doing it now when they didn't do it before? You know, they, they, this must be incredibly spiteful. I mean, it's exactly the same. Why aren't we paying the European Union millions of pounds a week when we did it before? It's because we left the European Union. Why, why, can't, why can't people from Romania and Poland come and work here without a visa like they could before? It's because we left the European Union. It's so bizarre, isn't it? I mean, it's like fully absurd, right? And I think that, you know, I'm sure many hardline Remainers are going to be looking at this as kind of a moment of schadenfreude. But obviously it, it's it's sad. And it's, it's also not the headline story of what happens when you put restrictions on freedom of movement. That is, you know, the casualties of that are much more serious than like a seven euro charge on something. But it's, you know, it's just, it, it, it's sad to watch. And I think, I also think, and not to get too kind of like, I don't know, academic about it, but I think the the reason we find it so amusing is because what's happening here is that is is that the extent to which freedom of movement has always been seen as a racialized right, right, is is coming through, but it's coming through through an unlikely vessel. And that unlikely vessel is Carol Malone, who comes from a political tradition where, you know, the nation state or like a collection of nation states um, and, you know, the right of nation states to sometimes violently assert its borders is not only an unquestionable right, but it's a right that supersedes all other rights. You know, nothing is nothing is 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 more important in the face of it. 
And, you know, we're told that's common sense. It's, you know, the natural order of things. And yet the idea that it would be imposed upon British people and specifically white British people like her is, you know, now is being seen as a, is, is, is it has her clutching her pearls. And, you know, the idea that what was once the inalienable right of a nation state to control its borders or whatever is now, you know, it's shocking. It's unfair. It's driven by, by vengeance. It's driven by emotion and irrationality and hatred. And it's a thing that, you know, it's the pathology of a controlling institution, which I found hilarious because I'm like, that's the nation state. No, you know, like the gag is that, you know, all borders are kind of driven by emotion and, you know, a desire to control. And it seems obvious to point out, but it's because like whiteness and specifically white Britishness has always been defined in part by its mobility and the fact that it has mobility in comparison to others. And it's defined by its ability to move freely and in and around and through any space that it desires and not only move through it, but transform that space according to its desires. You know, that that's kind of what colonialism is. So what's being exposed in this video is that, you know, what we were told was unavoidable and natural and common sense only has those properties when it's being used to sort of protect and preserve existing power. Um, but it also is just funny to watch Carol Malone sort of lose her shit on, on air, um, especially when it's over something that, you know, she a couple of years ago was fighting vociferously for. We were never big Romaniacs. And one of the weakest arguments of of the Romaniacs was sort of to to take something that is actually quite insignificant on the grand scheme of things and make it seem like it would be the absolute end of the world if this were to stop being the case. So roaming charges or something like that. We can't possibly leave the European Union because it will cost you more in roaming charges. We'll have to pay some money when we download a meme in Italy. I don't know. The argument to that from you know, the Brexiteers was reasonably, you know, we think sovereignty is more important than this. Maybe secretly they were thinking we think, you know, reducing immigration is more important than this. But the idea that there are more important things than roaming charges is a fine political argument. What's happened now is we've gone full circle where it's the Brexiteers who are saying that these really minor small benefits of being in the EU, like you don't have to pay seven euros to go on holiday, that these are now like the end of the world. So like, I, I can't believe we're possibly having to pay seven euros. You only have to do it once every three years, by the way, to, to go to France or Portugal. They now think that's a huge political issue when the whole point of the referendum campaign is them saying, well, these things don't actually really matter. It, it doesn't matter about roaming fees. It doesn't matter if you're going to have to queue slightly longer at the airport and, and not have the you know checkpoint free travel because what really matters is sovereignty and democracy. Now we've got that. They're like, oh, actually, these minor inconveniences, they really matter and they matter so much that I'm going to go on TV to rant about it in front of the nation. Completely ridiculous. If I was Carol Malone and I was trying to kind of cover my back and trying to seem like, you know, I'm consistent and I'm knowledgeable and I'm reasonable, which I'm not sure if that is what Carol Malone tries to do every time she goes on TV, but I would be like, OK, I'm going to take this story and I'm going to say, you know, if this is what liberty costs, then seven euros, I'm happy to pay it every three years. But it's the, the entitlement, it's too strong and it's too much the core of her politics that she just can't help herself, even though it would be far more politically astute to kind of flip this on its head. 